blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Um, uh, untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he reached Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This Palm Sunday is unusual, unlike any other Palm Sunday I've experienced. And so instead of passing out palms, long strands of palm branches that we will wave in the air at church together, I invite you to find some sort of garment or a branch from a tree or bush around your home and join me for a blessing over our garments and branches. And I invite you to take those items, the garments or the pieces of a bush or tree, a branch or limb, and take them to the farthest place on your property away from the church and turn towards our church buildings, even though you probably can't see them from your house, and aim in that direction for your procession. We imagine one another processing across our properties towards that place where we long to gather and process together. And so we will have this procession together from the farthest point of our property in the direction of St. Andrews. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Friends, I invite you to lay your hands on those garments or branches that you have with you today. Lay your hands over them and repeat after me. Let these branches and garments be for us signs of Jesus' victory. And grant that we who bear them in his name 
may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite you, as you hear the music, for all glory, laud, and honor, to throw your garments down or to wave your branches in the air and move in the direction of St. Andrews, where we will one day gather again. I'm willing to bet that many of you know a verse from the Bible by heart, a verse from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. You may not instantly recognize this verse by the title Ephesians 5, 2, and yet I think for many of you it's embedded in your heart and in your mind. Let's see if I'm correct. Finish this sentence if you can. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Did you know it? Is that familiar to you? You maybe didn't know that it was from Ephesians 5 verse 2. Many of you recognize these words, which I use regularly during a church service as the offering is beginning. This verse is one of nine options in the Book of Common Prayer that I can use for inviting God's people to gather together all of their gifts as we approach the table for Holy Eucharist. These are the words we hear as the bread and wine are then brought up to the table and the deacon begins to prepare the table for that shared feast that we know as the body of Christ, that feast that we are longing for as our services have been suspended because of public health concerns. So on this Palm Sunday, as we remain God's gathered people, as we remain the body of Christ, but in a new and different way, apart from one another, let's break this verse down a bit. This verse from Ephesians 5, verse 2. Walk. God's people walk. We move in the direction of God. We move to imitate God. We walk in the direction that Jesus is leading us. And today, we walk into the gates of the holy city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city of Shalom, celebrating the love of God for all of God's people. That love of God for all of God's people came to live among us in Jesus Christ. Today, we are not able to walk together in proximity to one another as we usually do on Palm Sunday. Many of us have joyful memories of following Daisy the donkey into the parish house or into Union Chapel, waving our palms and singing Hosanna. And yet we still walk. We might be walking in our own yards this year in the direction of St. Andrews, as I'm doing right now. If we don't move our bodies, if we are only walking 
spiritually, then we are moving our souls, if not our bodies, in the direction that God is leading us, drawn into this moment when Jesus enters Jerusalem in triumph. Walk in love. As God's gathered community, we walk through this life in a particular way, in love. We walk as Jesus walked. He was in love with God's people, with creation, with those who were in the center of power and also with those who were out on the edges of society. We walk in love, in love with God, in love with one another, in love with all of creation. Walk in love as Christ. Christ is our model for walking in love, for all that we do. To follow Christ, to pattern our lives after Christ, is the goal of Christian existence. To pattern our lives after Christ, we must know something about Christ, about Jesus who came to live among us and teach us and heal us and even challenge us. In order to walk in love as Christ, we must study the life of Jesus and seek to imitate God, especially as we know God in Christ. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Loved us. Our blueprint for how to love comes from the ways we know God loves God's beloved children, which includes every human being. God loved us so much that God came to pitch his dwelling among us, to pitch his tent, to set up a place near us, with us. Not only one time 2,000 years ago, but also right here and right now. So wherever you are today, whether you are isolated and alone in a studio apartment in some urban place, or perhaps you've moved back into your parents' house and you'd really rather be in a, your college dorm where you were supposed to be this time of year. Perhaps you're able to move out and about on um, a nice grassy area like this, wherever you are in the world now, God continues to dwell among us, pitching God's dwelling within your dwelling. God's house is not only church buildings. God lives with you, among you, and your household. God lives in your very heart. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself. Out of that love that came to dwell among us, we experience God pouring out God's very self into this world so that God's love could slip into the wounded spots, the dark and hidden places, the exposed and parched spaces of life. God gave God's very self to us by being born in human flesh, by riding a young colt into the city of Jerusalem. And we believe that God is still giving God's self to us every day, everywhere, for us gave himself for us. Yes, for us, for, for me and for you. Not only for Andrew and Peter and Mary and Martha, but for us, the ones who continue to follow and believe and imitate God in Jesus Christ. For all of humanity, God gives God's very self an offering gave himself for us an offering. God gives God's self as an offering to you, much like you work hard and offer the product of your labor to God in the offering basket each Sunday. This whole beautiful world is like one big offering basket with God pouring gifts into it for us, for you and for me, for all of humanity gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice. The offering is sacred, holy, and it costs something. It is precious and valuable, sacrificial. God's love for us is all these things. And so we give ourselves back in the same way, offering our precious time to worship and to serve, our valuable gifts, for the spread of the kingdom of Christ in our midst. And we give it all to God, an offering and sacrifice to God. 
All that we have is a gift from God. And so we give back to God. Jesus gave himself to God's purpose of redeeming this world by walking back into a city where people wanted to trap him. And it was a sacrificial gift to God. May we pattern our lives after this love that we know in Jesus, entering triumphantly into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And may we follow where this procession leads us, walking in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please recite with me the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. The peace of the Lord is always with you, and also with you. Peace, Salam, Shalom. 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 Peace, Salam, Shalom.